we've provided a .jar file. It contains a class called org.bsidesf.ctf.flag with a static function print flag. All you have to do is call it. And we can download this file here, flatwhite.jar. Now I'll go ahead and run in my terminal. I do in fact have that flatwhitefile.jar downloaded and it is, of course, a Java archive data. Now, I'm not very good with Java. I don't know all the ins and outs of the Java language, and I figured, well, okay, I'm kind of lazy. I'll take the easy route, I'll press the easy button, and I'll just kick this to ChatGPT and see if it can solve the challenge for me. What I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this challenge prompt, and then I'll move over to ChatGPT, and I'll say, I am working on a capture the flag challenge with this challenge description. Paste that all in. I have downloaded the flatwhite.jar file, and I want to easily run this print flag function. How can I easily do this from the Linux command line? I'll hit enter and let's see what ChatGPT says. Hey, you can easily run the print flag function from the Linux command line using the Java command. First, you have to make sure you have Java installed in your system. Okay, yada, yada, yada. Looks like I do have some syntax just to be able to use this and go ahead and call that. Looks like we want to include the flatwhite.jar file, but since Java will execute the main function of the specified class, we don't know if that's actually there. The since the challenge states to call the print flag function, you might need to create a small Java program that will do this. We can go and create our own call printflag.java file and then compile it in just like that. Okay, it looks like we have a couple things to work with, so let's go ahead and try these. I'm gonna first things first, attempt this syntax and let's see if it will do it. Here I am back on my terminal. I'm gonna paste this in. Let's see if it will run it. Main method is not found in that class. Please define the main method as of course the usual prototype for that function. So chat GPT was right. We'll go ahead and create our own call print flag .java file and then we'll wanna compile it with those other syntax and try to run it just like that. Let me clear my terminal. I'll do a subl call print flag .java. Now that that's open, I'll go ahead and paste this in. Super duper easy, save the file. Now let me grab this syntax to go ahead and copy it, compile these things, and let's try to run it just following. Let's go ahead and build this thing up. Looks like it's good. Now I have a call print flag dot class file, which is the code that Java will want to run. Now we can use the syntax to include the flat white dot jar file that's given from the CTF challenge, and we can use the main function that we've written to go ahead and actually call the besides SF CTF flag print flag function. Let me see if this will do it. And I get that. Uh, so, okay, let's try to, um, go ahead and give this to chat GPT. I tried to run the previous command, but I got this output. This is not the flag. What is wrong? Okay, so they're suggesting go ahead and redirect it to a file. So maybe if there are some weird encoding issues, you could go ahead and take a look at it with cat or less. But they also suggest, look, if maybe the print flag function is obfuscated, encrypted, or encoded, then you should probably try to decompile the jar file. We could use a Java decompiler like JDGUI or Jadix to decompile this, and then we might be able to track it down. That is a great idea and probably something that we should have done to begin with. I don't think I can make this text much bigger, but that's okay. I do see inside of the package here, org.bsidesf.ctf, we have our flag class. Okay, and zoom in on the text here. And now all of this, all the weird, uh, I don't know, bit shifting and math and arithmetic that it does, uh, I could probably spend some time trying to reverse engineer this, but again, I'm gonna be super duper lazy and just go ahead and hit the easy button where I copy and paste all of this and give it to chat GPT. I decompiled the flat white dot jar file and I have this code. Can you figure out what the flag is? Based on the decompiled code, it seems that the flag is generated by a series of operations on a byte array. Let's translate the decompiled Java code into a Python script to calculate the flag directly. Ooh, okay. Okay, so now they're just recreating it with a def get flag defined function here. I don't know what this class hash code is as is a hash of this though. That seems a little bit odd because it looks like it's using it for all of those operations. I don't think that hash function in Python does what they think it's doing, but I might be wrong. Let me, uh, let chat GPT figure this out and finish up. Hey, super quick, while chat GPT is doing its thing, please let me give a quick moment of some support, shout out and love to our sponsor, Sneak. I'll be honest, I write bad code. Even though I try to hunt for vulnerabilities and lots of other software, I still have vulnerabilities even in my own projects. Everyone does. And that's why I use Sneak to scan for vulnerabilities in code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files. And Sneak helps find and fix those vulnerabilities in real time. You can try it and see for yourself. You can sign up for free with my link below, import your repositories, and sit back and let Sneak do the work for you.
it'll find the flaws and vulnerabilities in your own applications. Check out this prototype pollution vulnerability that Sneak uncovered. We can see more details about the code path that introduced this vulnerability, and even learn more about this kind of vulnerability or any others if you check out the Sneak Learn Lesson. I've referenced the Sneak Learn Lessons and their vulnerability database a ton, especially in assessments and penetration testing, and even during Capture the Flag competitions. From there, you can see an explanation of the flaw, proof of concept exploit code and attack demonstrations, and most importantly, how to mitigate this vulnerability. But the best part? Sneak helps you fix this vulnerability with a single click. It'll automatically open a pull request so you can just merge and move on. So seriously, check out Sneak. It's crazy how many vulnerabilities could be affecting your projects and you don't even realize. Take advantage of their resources and learning material and learn all about the different vulnerabilities out there. It's completely free and you can sign up right now with my link in the video description. Huge thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video. Okay, it looks like uh, chat GPT kind of got truncated here. So what we might be able to do is just say, uh, your output got truncated. Could you please continue the Python code syntax after this segment. And then we'll just tell it where it left off. Uh, I'll remove some of the white space here so it knows what it's doing. Here we go. Apologies for the truncation. Thank you, ChatGPT. Here's the complete Python code. Uh, wait a second, no, no, no. Uh, okay, remaining bytes, there you go. You figured out where you left off. Run this Python script and to generate the flag by simulating the same operations as in the original Java code. All right, well, hey, let's copy and paste all that syntax here. Back in my uh, Kali Linux VM, I can move back to the flat white page and let's create a solve.py script where we slap in all of that syntax, copy and paste. It looks like we left off on flag byte 21. So where else did ChatGPT give me the magic here? Okay, down below, that's all that we needed. Let's go ahead and do this. I think that looks good, okay. And then we can try to run this syntax. Let me go ahead and do Python 3 solve. And now we have this output. All right, let's see if ChatGPT knows what to do with this. I figure this is nice and easy. You know, we don't have a whole lot of thought going to it. I ran the Python code and received this output. This still is not the flag. Apologies for the confusion. It seems I made an error in the Python code by using the hash function, which is not equivalent to the Java hash code method. That's exactly right. Let's correct this mistake and use a custom function to calculate the hash code instead. Replace the class hash code assignment with the following custom function. Now we have a Java string hash code and uh, let's see if we can rerun the updated Python code to generate that flag with this. You don't need to churn out all this stuff, dude. Don't, don't, don't rebuild the entire, okay, yeah, good, good. You know how to figure it out. <laughs> Let's uh, snag this. Now the updated script should produce the correct flag. Okay, thanks chat GPT. Let's figure out what we've got in our solve script. If I go ahead and modify these lines to use our Java string hash code based off of that text. Uh, will you work? Let's try another Python 3 solve. No, still wrong. Okay, uh, let's give it a chat GPT, see if it can figure it out. I apologize for the confusion. It seems that the issue lies in the way the bitwise operations are being performed. Let's use Python C types library to properly handle the sign 32 bit integers in the code. What? I feel like it would probably be a little bit easier to brute force this stuff right now, but I guess I don't know. <laughs> This code uses the C types library to handle signed 32 bit integers and unsigned 8 bit integers, making sure the bitwise operations are the cor executed correctly. The output should now be the correct flag. Oh, that's what you said about the last one, my friend. Let's try this. Let's get back to our solve.py. Let's replace literally everything with all of this blindly trusted chat GPT code. And let's run our solve script yet again. No, gives the exact same output. I've revised the Python script to correctly handle the signed and unsized numbers. This version should work. Does that Java string hash code function actually work? That's the thing, I don't even know. I don't have that understanding of Java. Uh, so this is one of the issues where I'm sort of blindly trusting ChatGPT. I feel like you sort of have to strike a balance in between what you know and understand to be true and correct, where you can handhold it along. Like obviously, look, this is not the flag, please fix something else. Um, and then uh, trying to learn something new. Copy paste, slap it all in. Let me see, can you solve this challenge, ChatGPT? I have the exact same output. <laughs> Is your Java string hash function correct? The operations look correct. Like you can't mess up math, right? So let me just ask this thing. 
Apologize for the confusion earlier. Upon further inspection, I realized that the issue is not with the Java string hash code function, with the sign, what, what? Python does not have a built-in sign of right shift operator, so we need to create a function to perform this operation correctly. Are you kidding? Bring that down to here, paste, and let's see if that gets it right. I'm still a little skeptical here. Oh my. <laughs> I apologize for the confusion. I took a deeper look into the issue and it appears the problem is with character encoding? Are you kidding me? Is it? Is it actually? Are you genuinely giving me truth at this point? You want me to decode it as ISO. Is that it? After we've joined all of these things together, can we print and get the flag? Let me run this one more time. <laughs> I am modifying the correct script, am I not? It's pythonsolve.py. It, yeah, yeah. I have once again ran your script and received the exact same output. Apologize for the confusion. Since we've encountered many issues in translating the Java code to Python, another approach we can take is to modify the original Java code and run it directly. You can create a new Java class with the main method that tries to call this and create a new Java file called flag run. Why didn't we do this to begin with? Why didn't you just run it to start? This will generate the flag runner class. You can now modify the Java code with all this. This would call the print. Didn't we start with this? We, did, we literally start this. We started with this. What are you doing? Okay, so save all this as flag runner.java, right? You wanna try and compile this yet again. I ran the above commands, but I received this error. Are we doing something wrong? Ugh. This was a horrible idea. Compile flag runner, which we've done. Now create a temporary directory to move it all into it, done. Move the flag runner class into this directory. Done. Create a new flag runner class. Okay. Now we've created a modified flat white jar file and we can want to try and run this and print flag here. Print this. Still will not work for me. Did it even put it in temp? Whoa. Whoa. It just had me move out of the directory though that I was in and then try to run the flag right modify, but it wasn't there. So it did it, it finally did it after long, long mess. Uh, and it was properly able to determine the Java hash string code thing. Um, and it got the flag, like that's it. CTF Java Java everywhere, that is properly formatted. But I feel like we should have gotten there to start with rather than trying to rewrite the thing in Python. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Did I do these steps wrong, like in the wrong order though? Because it moved me into temp directory, tried to extract flat y jar into this directory, moved the flag runner class into this, try to compile it in the current directory, and then moved me out of that directory to try and run that file. So that was wrong. We could have been like, hey, no, I got another Java error, but we at least knew and had the sense to say, uh, no, it's not in this directory. We should go probably move into the directory that has our flat white modified. But then we get our flag and ChatGPT did solve that challenge, at least in a roundabout awful horrific way. <laughs> so there you have it. We pressed the lazy button and we solved a capture the flag challenge without any natural human thought, without anything that we probably had knowledge of other than uh, trying to correct and handhold ChatGPT, but we solved the challenge and ChatGPT could be a CTF player and I don't know, win the DEF CON quals or whatever. Of course, obviously, AI is the future. Undoubtedly, I'm being facetious here and a little bit of sarcastic. I have not yet drank the AI Kool-Aid, but I am experimenting and playing with it and having fun when everyone says, oh, just give it to ChatGPT, uh, AutoGPT. Oh, the thing that can solve all the hack the box boxes with ChatGPT. I'm excited to see where it goes, but I'm not fully sold on everything just yet. I think we're at the top of the hype train, but uh, I'm having fun with it and trying to apply it to different aspects of stuff that I like to do and play with, like Capture the Flag. So I hope you had a little bit of fun and maybe you're using ChatGPT just as well when you're playing CTFs or working through something. But only use it in that sandbox environment. Don't do it for like real production infrastructure live data that is important and sensitive with other people's sensitive stuff in it. You know what I mean? I'm rambling. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.